Uh, Ryong versus Neeb TVP. And God damn it, Neeb, why are you a barcode? It's it's the legacy beta. Why? Uh. All right, I'm gonna add his text. You do the intro. Okay. In the bottom right, as the blue Protoss, it's Neeb. He doesn't Neeb to make a barcode out of his name. <laughs> Right. That was terrible. Uh, and the top left, sorry, I'm still adjusting the overlay, guys. It's going to be the red Terran player, Ryung, playing for Axiom. Now, th this really brings me back here. Th this, for me, is going to be the matchup that tells me whether Ryung is a badass or not. TVP is not as bad right now as it was. All the folks who said TVP was unplayable before pretty much tweeted, like, after the Adept nerf and some of the changes to the mule being better, that this matchup's a lot more viable. Uh, looks like we're losing Zombie up again for a second. Awkward. Hmm. Oh, hello. I actually don't know what's causing that. I keep thinking that my time for my internet has run out, but it's not supposed to until 12. You're in the land of good internet. The fact that you're having bad internet in the land of good internet, it's like, it's like, it's like going to Candyland and only finding vegetables to eat. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know, because I'm on the right internet this time, too. Like, I tested it first. I don't know if you saw that in the chat. No, I did not, actually. So it says, like, the, the connections are palace guests and then, like, the floors. So there's sixth floor through eighth floor. And there's also five floor through seventh floor. And we're on the sixth floor. So I picked the sixth floor to the eighth floor. And I got, like, three up, three down or some shit. And I was like, wow, bad internet. Hmm. But then I picked five floor through seventh floor. And it's now 30 up, 30 down. So. I don't know. That's strange. It might actually just be that, like, as good as it is, it's not a stable connection because there's so much. Like, there's so many people are using it. I remember there was times where we'd be casting certain players and they couldn't play because no matter how good the internet was, the roommates were, like, downloading things or using torrents and stuff. That's, that's true. It's probably that, you know. If, unfortunately, if this had been at the normal time, like, I don't know, and we were getting into, like, 10 p.m., maybe it would be different, but I don't know what would have been better time. Hmm. Five oh. in the morning. Oh, I have something for you. I... I in our years of being together, I don't know if I've, I've laid this one out, okay? But I got Zan with it pretty good. So I'm going to try it, all right? It's not going to go. How long is a Chinese man? Yes, he is. Okay, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting nagged on Skype to try and pull this one off. I'm like, I'm pretty sure I've asked her before, guys. Like, it's not going to work. Yeah, I think that's one of the first jokes you've asked me, so... I got Zam pretty good with it. I was like super wasted, and I think he thought I was just being stupid. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, it's clever. <laughs> All right. Uh, so for this game, Neeb just kind of setting up for a normal build. He didn't go for two gateways, so not pushing out of depths really early. He in fact just gets that nexus up nice and fine. And I really, I don't know where he sit with his matchup because we we have played and we have seen. So on both ends of this, how good you can do aggression without dedicating to an all in. This was a great trap out of Ryung, by the way. He's absolutely going to kill that adept now. Nicely done. Mm -hmm. uh, but but things where you can go for like two to three gateways without all inning and still expand and tackle. You referenced this specifically before when watching Kai Fire, and I, I I definitely feel like that's the stronger way to play the matchup right now. Uh, one of the things we are going to see struggle though is because Kai or sorry, not Kai Fire, Neeb is not going for a Stargate opener. He might take some damage from these Liberators. There's no mm -hmm. pylons behind the mineral lines, so some sweet shots are going to be had. Yeah, that is the first problem. Uh, the second problem is that Terraform at the natural at least has one spot where it's a little tricky, like with high ground vision, so much record does have to be in position. Um, but in the main, there's actually not that much f space for Liberator to hide. So it's uh, already a little bit better than Ruins of Saros. Mm -hmm. In at least one area, maybe not the other one. But it seems like the Axiom house just likes this opener versus Protoss. <laughs> Well, it, both done it now. You say it like that, and it sounds a little funny, but that that makes sense to me. Where you're like, "Hey, Ryung, I'm having trouble with this matchup. What do I do?" And Ryung's like, "Yo, go Liberators, or vice versa." You know, so if one of them had success, of course they'd share it with the other. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, but here we go. This is a spot that's a little more abusable. <laughs> Defender uh, mode. Main. I still don't like this name. I'm gonna defend the shit out of this mineral line. <laughs> Maybe if we complain about it enough, that it'll be like the lurker sound, which. We still need to be increased, by the way. Um, yeah. It does sound better, though, at the very least. Like, I'll give them that much. They nailed the new sound. It's just quiet still. Yeah, that's the problem. So there we go. That's a little abusable. It's um, I, I, not, I, not so much. I love know. the way this works, though, where you don't have to slaughter a mineral line. You don't have to kill 40 probes for this to actually do damage. You deny mining, and that in itself is ah! dealing a ton of damage. 
Yes, what? But, uh... I don't... Mm. It's just an interesting build opener that I think we might have the same problem that we did with, like, Widowmine drops, where they can do a lot of potential damage and take off a lot of mining time, but a counterattack of, like, Blink Stalkers or Adept or something could be really devastating, and that's probably why Ryung has his command center up on the high ground, because he's probably had to deal with exactly that, just being counterattacked. Mm. And, uh, you know, you're denying one mine, or one mineral line, fine, but... If they have any money whatsoever, you just don't have a lot of production back at home. Not yet. Well, I like this response from Neeb. Just expand again. Yeah, I mean, you can't shoot buildings, so that's good. I like the Sargi that he got behind us. It wasn't going to be complacency, hoping to rely on Blink or something. And honestly, having a couple of Phoenix is not bad. We've actually seen some mass Phoenix builds that have been really impressive in Legacy. Oh, Ooh. no! Oh, how? <laughs> Ryung with the anti- What the- <laughs> This warp prism is actually very dangerous now. Let's not forget, guys, mm -hmm. it's like two second warp in, so instant army in Ryung's base. There's no way he's gonna have time to respond to this. I believe it's only three warp at a time, though, so at least it's not super insane. No, no, but still, it's, it's uh, not gonna be fun to clean up. Does, do the yeah. depths have their upgrade? They don't, so not gonna slaughter the SCV line. If these had their upgrades, these would kill so many more SCVs, and they're already killing tons. Yeah, I mean, they, are, they still do nice SCV work. Uh, the tank it was really good, though. Added a lot of damage, and we'll be able to clean that up. The Warp Prism, in fact, goes home. Could get some instant warp ins to uh, back attack this little push with, which would be a very effective with the tanks there. Liberators, I mean, they're going to do fine, I think, against these three Phoenix. I'm um, loving this bunker. <laughs> it's kind of funny. It's like a 1 1 1 push, man. The Young Phoenix? with the old school tactics. Oh, this adept is going to be so cool. Yeah, it's going to try and friendly fire on top of the tanks. I like that move quite a bit, actually. It doesn't quite destroy them, but we'll break yeah, the tank line. Immortal on the wrong side of this fight, though. Should really be shooting that tank, not ooh, the Marines. Ooh. And where's the Mothership Core? I uh, believe it... No, it's somewhere. Oh, it's back here. Full energy, He's too. Figures it won't be useful. That pylon doesn't reach it. Its time warp wouldn't, wouldn't even come into effect by the time the, uh, the battle was over. So I guess it's better just staying at home. Yep. You know, if the Phoenix stay alive, though, I mean, again, being able to Graviton, being able to things like the Widow Mine, dive in for the tanks. Oh, but they they clump, obviously, when they get on top of things. So every single time they do that, the Liberator gets some really nice shots. Oh, and here comes round two. Does Ryung know yeah, about the third base? Yeah, that Warp Prism. Okay, he does. Yes, yes yeah. he does. So the, the Warp Prism, it came back home. I thought he was going to warp in, like, you know, like six, nine Adepts and then kind of um, sandwich. Didn't do that. It would have been so much better harassing still. Uh, but I guess he just figured Ryung was going to be banking units up at home. After waiting a little while, Ryung did send his units over to help out this push, and now yep. now he comes back in with the War Prism. If these two Immortals come in first, too, they, they're going to have that barrier. They will be able to tank a lot of the shots, especially from the Marines, even, but uh, we'll see if the counterattack's enough. It's Stalkers, though. It's three Stalkers. This is not a, this is not a good counterattack. Oh, he's actually going to get surrounded, too. Love you the know, television. The Stalkers actually would be better, because they can, like, they could micro and then take off the liberator and whatnot, but uh, you had to pay attention to the stalkers. So that's why I don't. I didn't like that choice as much. He was repairing the tank, by the way, while it was grabbing him. Beam. I love that. That's hilarious. Yeah, stalkers uh, don't do very much at all. Tank still. I mean, the tank liberator combo is just obliterating everything. He's trying to find the smartest way to deal with this, and I think eventually he will be able to. I mean, look at the supply, and it really does feel very. Very much so like the 1-1-1. One, one, one. I don't was that before or after your time, Rifkin? It was just as I was getting into it was still popular. 1-1-1 one, one, one is still a pretty big deal. Yeah, so that was like I don't know, like about like a year into me being in a StarCraft 2. And I, I, you had people experiment with faster thirds to deal with the 1-1-1. One, one, one. You had people experiment with giving up their natural as opposed to trying to save it. Um it, it's like a very, it, it always seems to be on the brink of being broken, too, because tanks can be really finicky against Protoss. It just, it looks really similar to, like, an Ahana game <laughs> back in the day. I think one of the problems I'm seeing with this, though, is because he's he's stuck with gateways, and because he didn't go for a starting opener, but had to make it as a consequence later, we're missing a lot of tech out of Neeb for this. There's no Archons helping with this. There, there's no uh, Adept upgrades still. The, what's this called? Mm. Resonating Glaives. There, there's just so much missing from what could and should break this army. I think he's actually getting what he needs to, though. Uh, if you go for tech too quickly, then they just... they're The single target damage is, is pretty good. I mean, the Adepts really change the... Like, nothing's really changed here except the Liberators are here. And then the Adepts are there. So there's, like, there's one new unit in each of these compositions that wasn't there for, like, the original push we saw on maps like Ahana. But... 
in general, I think that the economy Neeb got by getting that faster third and just mass producing decent units like the Immortals and the Phoenix is going to be enough. Uh, the one mistake he could make that would actually devastate his attack on this army oh. would be to pump the Phoenix. They need to pick up the tanks. Well, here comes that sandwich. It took a little bit of time to get going. The Immortals on the front line still doing a lot of that go. damage. Going to break most of his two tanks in the air, not even firing, and absolutely walks over this army. The big question is now, does Ryan have enough at home to stay in this game? I don't think so. You know, you brought up uh, Neeb's tech. Ryang also really doesn't have any tech. He has the 1-1-1 one, one, one tech, so he has up to a starport, but he doesn't have, like, combat shield or a uh, stim. Yeah. He doesn't have combat shields. He doesn't have marauders. Like, he really doesn't have anything. <laughs> yeah, his production, I didn't even realize just how bad his production was. I guess he was really exactly. banking on a natural base being dead, letting him to win this game. But, you know, he never got to pick away at this third. And this third for Neeb, you brought it up, like, as, like, experimental, blah, blah, blah. But this was so critical to even having the money to build the army to get this far into the game. Yeah. Oh, well, this tank is screwed. He's going to try and repair yeah. the SCVs. It's not going to cut it. Liberator's going to help out just a little bit here. Phoenixes are not that scary. It's the Adepts, really, that are. Resonating Glaives is done. They're going to be attacking so quick, but it's Stalker's warping into Reinforce. Huh. Not that it really matters. The Immortal's going to take care of everything on the ground. And it looks like Neeb's actually going to win game number one. The thing about an attack like that, too, is, again, it's, it's like I said, it's like I'm always on the cusp of looking like it's about to be broken. But, um... We see people, or we've seen people, try and break that too quickly. You know, they're like, oh god, my Nexus is about to die, like, let me try and break it now. And then the tanks barely went out, and then it kind of snowballs from there. Neeb actually played that really smart, and Neeb is, despite being super young, I don't even remember how old the guy is, like 17, 16, he actually was playing StarCraft. He was Terran back when you were seeing the original 111 push that looked like that. So... I don't know if he was remembering that, or maybe he's had to deal with that on Legacy of the Void Ladder in the last week. I don't know how much of this game he's been playing, but that was pretty well handled. Yeah, keeping it calm was probably the most difficult thing to do in that situation. You've got bunkers, you've got siege tanks, you've literally lost your natural. Keeping a calm head under pressure, especially under that sort of pressure, is impressive. I was going to say, though, I, I hate this, like... For everything we ever do, I'm, like, too fucking old. Except for when it comes to StarCraft things. And it's like, Rifkin, was this before you... Like, it makes me sound like I'm a little kid who never saw StarCraft before. Like, god damn it. <laughs> Alright, uh, what's this? It's gonna be Orbital Shipyard.